Hey, today I want to talk about using no input mixing in a sound design context, which I think is a really fun, engaging, and relatively cheap way to uh, explore, improvise, and find some new sonic ideas. So specifically, in this video, I'm going to talk about and show some ways that I use no input mixing while also incorporating other sound sources into the feedback loop. And then I'll show you how we can further process uh, those recordings using a DAW and audio middleware to create some really cool audio assets for a game. So if you don't know what no input mixing is, I'll give you a, just a little brief explanation. Uh, a lot of other people have made great videos about this technique, including Sarah Bell Reed. Uh, she's the person who really got me into this technique, so I'll definitely put a link to one of her videos about it in the description of this video. But uh, it was a technique that was pioneered by Japanese musician Toshimaru Nakamura, who discovered that if you take just a normal mixing board, you know, a mixing console, and route the inputs into the outputs, you can create some really crazy, chaotic uh, feedback sounds. And then you can manipulate those sounds using all of the knobs of the mixer. So like the EQ knobs and the panning and the volume and gain knobs and basically any other uh, way to change the sound on the mixer will change the feedback loop. One of my favorite things about this technique is just the accessibility of it uh, because you can use basically any old mixer that you have or that you can find on Reverb or eBay or whatever for often less than $100. Like you can use some really cheap mixer and get some really useful and cool sounds out of it. One thing that I'll say before we start, maybe don't use your most fancy, most expensive mixer when you're doing this at first, because uh, the technique can lead to some really, really high decibel sounds coming out of the mixer, and you don't really want to damage your fanciest equipment if anything could go wrong. And then also, when you're monitoring, when you're recording, I'd recommend not to use headphones when you're monitoring at first until you get comfortable with managing the levels of the sound because it can get really, really loud really quickly and you don't want to damage your ears either. So this is my mixer that I'm going to show you a couple little techniques on today. So I'll just go through how it's kind of routed right now. This is where the vocal mic is coming in. It's the XLR that's behind this quarter inch. And the uh, quarter inch that's right here is, that's what's going into my, or sorry, my phone is going into this input too. In this input, we've got uh, my snare drum, which has a contact microphone that you can see right here, duct taped to the batter head of it. The two main outs are going into my audio interface, which is just off screen there. But if you want, uh, when you're recording, you could definitely just record one of the outs and then use this as another input for your feedback loop if you wanted to do that. It's a really slow moving process. So something that you can do is just find one sound that you really like, stick with it for a while because it will start to morph and change. And then also you can slowly add different adjustments to it as you go. Let's hear, so if we turn the lows up, on this one a bit, let's see what we get. So that low pitched kind of crackly sound is pretty uh, classic of this technique, I think. I really like it. and. One thing that's really cool is if you are using a vocal microphone or any other sound source that's going into it, uh, if you start introducing these crackles,
Hello. Today I wanted to talk about something super fun. Something super fun, something super lighthearted, something super good vibes, hashtag good vibes. I don't know, that's just the mood I'm in today. So today I wanted to talk about my anxiety. Yay! Yay! I wanted to talk about it because it's one of the most challenging things I deal with on a daily basis. recently like I don't know what it's going on. Somebody who's creepy, a fucking murderer. Any anyone out there could be watching me. And then it started to freak me out. And then I had another wave of anxiety starting to feel like, wait a minute, I don't deserve this. Alright, so I've taken a few clips from each of those recording sessions and uh, I'll show you each clip that I got and then we can do a little bit of processing to some of these just to give you some ideas or examples. My anxiety... Oh, also I added a quick fade in and fade out using the fade tool in Logic for each clip just to make it somewhat less uh, abrupt. <laughs> This one could probably easily be split into two clips uh, with the beginning kind of screech thing and then the crackle thing being its own clip. My anxiety. Okay, so one idea that comes to mind that we could do with this is do some flex time. Let's just here if we do flex time speed and slow it down a good bit. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, I kind of like how the vocals sound, but the what were the really high frequency tones that were coming out uh, in the in the mixer are now a little bit lower and now they're very loud and very uh, kind of distracting. So maybe we could try polyphonic so it kind of keeps the same pitch. My anxiety. Why don't we stretch it out a lot? Keep the feedback part a bit shorter. So the vocals take a long time. We could try a little bit more, stretch certain parts of it. Almost sounds like a like a vocaloid or something, so that's kind of that's kind of hip. We could try time stretching, but in the opposite direction. 
What if we make it really fast? That could be kind of cool. I could hear that being used for like some sort of alien language or something like that. So I had quite a few over the years. For this, we could always add some an actual pitch shifter. I kind of like to do a major, uh, a perfect fifth up and a perfect fifth down, and we just have twenty five percent of each. Let's hear what that just that sounds like. So I had quite a few over the years. I had one big, big, big. Time stretch that too. I'm kind of addicted to this flex time. So, I'm quite a few so I had quite a few Let's just take a little bit of a shorter sample. Has kind of a different effect to the previous uh, vocal flex time that we did. It sounds kind of more evil and like something that's dying. I kind of like that. One other thing we could do with this, let's try, instead of fading in and fading out, why don't we slow down? a bit abrupt. If we have it take a little bit longer and not be as steep. Okay. Could use some more work, but that's kind of cool. Let's take a listen to this lovely growl sound. Honestly, I love it as is, but there's a few things we could do. We could just try putting a reverb on there and seeing what that's like. It's kind of fun. We could do some time stretching again. Why don't we futz around with different flex time in different places? heard when it got super sped up, the pitch was more noticeable, or more, you could grasp onto the pitch. It's kind of cool. Add a little bit of bit crusher. So the last thing I wanted to show you is just a little bit of stuff in Wise uh, from my last game that I just released. Oh, actually, I recorded a lot of the sound effects using no input mixing. And today I'll just show you a little bit from the immune system section. So here's the uh, gun uh, that the player will shoot white blood cells out of during that section. It's just a sequence container with one object that plays and then the other that loops in. Uh, infinitely while the mouse is held down. So I'll just give you a taste of what that sounds like. Okay, next I'll show you uh, the sound of the player touching a pathogen and getting hurt, which is another sequence container. So yeah, the first one is kind of like a screaming sound, but these are both made from no input mixing. Uh, and the second one's kind of like a squishy, kind of fleshy, distorted, pulsing sound. And then lastly, I'll just show you uh, the death sound once you hit and kill one of the pathogens. It's a random 
uh, container with a bunch of similar, just different pitched sounding little blips from uh, the mixer. Okay, so now let's hear these sounds working together in the game engine. I forgot to mention. Um, so depending on the mixer you get and are using, uh, some mixers actually have onboard effects in them. Uh, so that's a really cool way to experiment and modify the signal while you're still recording and improvising in real time. So just research a couple options. I have a mixer at home uh, in the States that has onboard effects and it make some really crazy cool soundscape. So I'll put a link to that one in the description too. All right, so that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment on this video or message me on Instagram. It's at Mary Jerfy. Um, there's a lot of stuff we haven't gone over in this short video about no input mixing. So uh, keep your ears and mind open and keep trying out and experimenting different techniques. And I'm sure you'll get some really cool sounds out of it. So, all right, have a good rest of your day. Bye.